All right, I wanted to make a quick um, screencast for you guys just to review the concepts behind the life cycle of stars. So I wanted to kind of highlight this. I thought this was a pretty good diagram on um, the whole idea and how size relates to the different paths that different stars can take. So we, we know that we start with a nebula, and a nebula is a cloud of debris, dust, gases, um, larger material that came from the explosion of a previous star and its um, whatever orbited it, planets, comets, asteroids, etc. So we have this big cloud of stuff and, the, and we know that gravity tends to, well it's going to push these things inward. So all this stuff, this, this planet stuff, this star stuff, whatever was left over from a previous explosion is now here and it's congealing. Gravity is pushing it together. Um, it's pushing it together such that heat is starting to build up in the middle, it's starting to spin a little bit, and we're getting a protostar. So temperatures are rising, we're starting to get this stuff to congeal, but the key distinction here is that the temperatures are not hot enough for fusion to start, so we're still a protostar. Once fusion begins, we've crossed this threshold. Once hydrogen, which is our simplest chemical, starts fusing into helium, now we're a main sequence star. Now we've, we've kind of reached adulthood in, in terms of a star. So we're here. We've got hydrogen fusing into helium. This, these are the, um, the, the chemical reactions that are providing the energy, providing the fuel for this star to, to uh, withstand gravity. Because gravity is going to be pushing inward constantly, so the energy of that fusion has to counteract and balance and so they, have, they, they kind of find an equilibrium. And they can have that e equilibrium for billions of years if it's a smaller star. If it's like a medium-sized star like our sun, uh, they can find that equilibrium for 10 billion years. If it's a huge star, um, it might only be millions of years. Now, the size of that star is going to depend completely on the size of the nebula. How much stuff was there to begin with um, to make this star. If there was a ton of stuff, a ton of dust, a ton of debris, you're going to have a giant star. If there wasn't as much, you're going to have a smaller star. Now, if it's a smaller star, a medium-sized star like our sun, after it runs out of hydrogen, after all the hydrogen's been fused into helium, that star is going to start to shed its outer layer. It's going to become a red giant. And that outer layer starts to shed outward and it's going to form a planetary nebula because all that stuff in those outer layers can later on be used to make new planets and new stars. And then that core that's left can fuse up to carbon and it's basically then a dying star. It's a white dwarf. If it's a larger star, much larger, say twice as large as our sun, it's going to go this direction. It's going to become a red supergiant. All right. Now we said that Main sequence stars, if they're really, really large, don't live as long. They burn hotter. They go through their fuel much quicker. So this is going to be a quicker process. Expands to a red supergiant, obviously much bigger than a red giant. Now, there's going to be a very, very violent explosion. Because remember, fusion's pushing outward, gravity's pushing inward. Well, when fusion stops, or when it's not able to withstand gravity, gravity snaps inward. And, eventually, and there's immediately a reverberation back outward, and that's your supernova. So it snaps in and then back out. All that energy creates an explosion, which is the supernova, which then blows up everything around it. And if it's big enough, it can put a hole in space-time. Remember, I, I used the analogy of everybody being on a trampoline. And if you're standing on the trampoline and the explosion's big enough and... Um, densities are, are, are great enough, it can push, punch a hole in that trampoline or space-time and there's your black hole. What's left at that core is a neutron star, made of neutrons. We always use that analogy that's extremely dense, that one teaspoon of it is heavier than a loaded cruise ship. So that's kind of the, the path that this can go. And with this supernova, it explodes, everything around it goes up, becomes dust, becomes particles, and it starts all over again. We start right back here with a nebula, and a whole new solar system can form.
I hope that helps.